Tired of ads barging into your favorite news podcasts? Good news. Ad-free listening on Amazon Music is included with your Prime membership. Just head to amazon.com slash ad-free news podcasts to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Enjoy thousands of ACAST shows ad-free for Prime subscribers. Some shows may have ads. On today's Smart 7, Tory MP sorry not sorry over migrant remarks, water companies causing a stink again and lots more. It's Thursday the 10th of August, it's World Lion Day and happy birthday Kylie Jenner. The Smart 7, it's news but not for news. It's all about the baby Stockholm again today and the asylum seekers that boarded the barge, only to be told they could leave. After the first few migrants made the floating vessel their new home, it emerged about 20 of them were granted a last-minute reprieve. Apparently, it's all down to lawyers challenging the decision to move them onto the barge, moored off the Dorset coast, after some claimed a fear of water due to previous traumas. Tory MP Lee Anderson wasn't happy, and he said some pretty nasty things about people seeking refuge in the UK. Labour's Yvette Cooper says his comments aren't helping. Instead of ramping up the rhetoric, instead of promoting division, what they should be doing is getting on with sorting the problems out. Rishi Sunak's plan is just not working at the moment. Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick was more positive, though. He's promised the government will sort out the current backlog of asylum seekers. The last eight weeks of data show record levels of decision-making. So I'm very confident that we will make good on the promise that we made in December to clear the legacy backlog by the end of the year. Yeah. Meanwhile, on another failing government migrant plan, some senior Tories have said they're going to campaign to leave the European Court of Human Rights if the controversial flights to Rwanda continue to be blocked. But Chair of the Justice Committee, Tory MP Bob Neill, says that's a nonsense idea. It will be a completely foolish idea and absolutely wrong. Uh, it isn't Conservative Party policy. It isn't government policy. Uh, whoever these uh, unnamed people are speak for themselves, not for the government and not for the Conservative Party. It's going from bad to worse for police in Northern Ireland after not one but now two data breaches have been revealed. The second breach is down to the theft of a spreadsheet with the names of 200 officers and staff and comes less than 24 hours after a monumental leak of staff information. The PSNI apologised after inadvertently publishing the information in response to a freedom of information request. It's a serious breach including the surname, initials, the rank or grade, the work location and department of all all PSNI staff, but not, luckily, their home addresses. Sinn Féin's Jerry Kelly explained the scale of the breach. This is a colossal breach. It is every single member of uh, both the police officers and the PSNI staff, which is, could be up to uh, 10,000 uh, individuals involved. It's probably the biggest uh, data breach um, that I can certainly uh, remember. Something doesn't smell right, and it's not just the raw sewage pumping into England's waterways. It seems water companies have been up to their old tricks amid allegations they underreported pollution discharges and overcharged customers as a result. A case is to be brought against them in a bid to secure more than £800 million in compensation on behalf of 20 million customers. Professor Carolyn Roberts, who's leading the case, explains why they're going to court. It's our contention that they have been underreporting the extent of the spills of sewage. By underreporting, they are seen as hitting their targets, and if they hit their targets, they are allowed to charge their customers more for their services. River Action UK's Charles Watson says this case is very significant. I mean, this is momentous. This is this effectively it shows that the entire system for regulating and policing our water industry has it's broken. Now, ever heard of a search warrant for a former president's Twitter account? Well, neither had we. But that's what's happened during special counsel Jack Smith's criminal investigation into Donald Trump. And what's more, an internal Trump campaign memo revealed on Tuesday just how Donald and his team tried to interfere with the election process in multiple states after it was clear he had lost the 2020 presidential race. But as usual, Trump doesn't let real life get in the way of a good campaign speech. Here he is playing to his base. So this is all about election election interference, but that isn't quite good enough. Crooked Joe now wants the thug prosecutor, this deranged guy, to file a court order 
taken away my First Amendment rights so that I can't speak. Still to come on the Smart 7, FIFA's football power play and Seth Rogen predicts the future. Right after this. Tired of ads barging into your favorite news podcasts? Good news. Ad-free listening on Amazon Music is included with your Prime membership. Just head to amazon.com slash ad-free news podcasts to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Enjoy thousands of ACAST shows ad-free for Prime subscribers. Some shows may have ads. Welcome back. It's all kicking off in the football family as La Liga president Javier Tabes has accused FIFA president Gianni Infantino of a power grab. It's all about FIFA's decision to expand the World Cup and Club World Cup, which he sees as a threat to the Spanish league. The Club World Cup will be increased from 7 to 32 teams in from 2025 and the World Cup to 48 nations a year later, which Tabes says will put unbearable pressure on the football calendar and severely damage European clubs' revenues. I think it's more a power issue. Infantino has long wanted this club World Cup to compete really with the Champions League, and so there's a difference in power between FIFA and UEFA because of that. The Hollywood writers' strike reached its 100-day anniversary with no hint of an agreement. They're striking to seek better pay, stricter safeguards against the use of AI and improved conditions. But union members on the picket lines are starting to worry about their savings and professional options running out. Speaking on Wednesday, actor Seth Rogen says the SAG-AFTRA strike is going to end up worse for studios than it will for actors. I think the studios have a great distance to go, probably a greater one when it goes to them getting on the same page. These are people who hate each other, people who are in direct competition with one another. When this strike ends, they go back to being enemies. When this strike ends for us, we go back to being co-workers. <laughs> You know what they say, don't dip your pen in company ink, especially if you're up for the same promotion. Fair Play is the new knockout Netflix thriller pitting a couple against each other at work. Starring Phoebe Diviner and Alden Ehrenreich, it's about a couple who don't just live together, they also work together as analysts in the high-stakes and high-pressure world of finance, forced to abide by company policy and keep their relationship a secret. And when one gets a promotion over the other, things start to unravel. It's not out until September, but you can catch the trailer now we both can't keep working here i'm not quitting this firm has become my religion you have become my god you give me this opportunity i will give you everything i got are you out of your mind you're gonna end our relationship by setting off a bomb you've been listening to the smart seven we'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m hit that follow button and have a great day Tired of ads barging into your favorite news podcasts? Good news. Ad-free listening on Amazon Music is included with your Prime membership. Just head to amazon.com slash ad-free news podcasts to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Enjoy thousands of ACAST shows ad-free for Prime subscribers. Some shows may have ads.